Hi, I'm Jessica from Jessica Waters, and this is week number eight of my freezer challenge. Finally, edited and up. <laughs> uh, if you're new here, I'll leave a link to the entire freezer challenge playlist if you wanna watch everything from the beginning. If you enjoy the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to see more videos from me. Let's see what I came up with this week. Weeks. Couple weeks. <laughs> Good morning. This morning, I am going to try to use up some of my ground cherries. This isn't all of them, but this is a half a cup of ground cherries. I'm going to make like a fruit custard with this custard powder, birth custard powder. Um, I've got an apple that I can use, one watermelon, a cantaloupe to try to make about two cups. Probably it'll be a little bit more than two cups, but that's okay. Um, this, I'm just going to follow the in the instructions. I'll leave a link in, in the description below of a recipe that uses just regular any kind of custard powder. But I'm going to make this according to these directions. I'm probably going to do it on the stove because <laughs> that's what I like to do. A uh, quarter cup of the bird's custard powder and three tablespoons sugar. And then um, I don't have any milk right now, but I do have this evaporated milk. I think I need two and a quarter cups, no, two and a half cups, two and a half cups of milk. And I'll just turn that into two and a half cups and then a little bit of sugar so fruit custard for breakfast okay first thing i'm just going to make up this milk so that i have enough I could just add enough water to bring that up to two and a half cups, but it would be pretty thick. I'm gonna mix three cups. Usually I turn it into four cups, but because it's like a custard, I kind of want it to be a little bit thick. So I'm just gonna mix it with up to three cups with water. So I mixed three cups, but I don't need three cups. So I'll just put away some of the milk. I'll put some of my tea. I never usually have milk and tea. I'll add some sugar. First, we're going to mix together the custard powder and the sugar. A quarter cup of custard powder and three tablespoons of sugar. No burner is on. The burner is definitely not on. I'm just going to slowly whisk in my milk without the burner on just to mix all that stuff together. I feel like I made it lumpy right away. <laughs> oh well. I hope I keep mixing it while it's not on. It should be good. But I could be wrong. Bring it to a boil on medium heat. Just gonna stir it frequently too. And also cut up all those fruits. Half of this cantaloupe. They're very small. definitely boiling. I mean, it's not a big rolling boil, but it's starting to stick to the bottom, so I assume it's done. I'm going to take it off the heat and let it cool off. So I did kind of dry off these ground cherries because they're pretty wet from the freezer, and I don't want that in my custard, so 
They're pretty frozen quality. They're not very firm anymore, but I think they'll be fine in the custard. They start to look like, a little like squishy. And they're frozen. I could add them just whole like that. They probably would be just fine if I didn't cut them, actually. I think that's what I'm gonna do. Just add them, plunk them right in whole. They're, some of them are not very big, so we're just gonna add them to our making our two cups. I have this watermelon, which I hope is a watermelon inside. Oh, there you go. Nice. And we've got one apple. I think the French on the on the custard, on the bird's custard powder. The French says creme anglaise, but the English doesn't say cr English cream. So that's interesting. We do have some little tiny apple bits as well in our custard. Lots of apple. All right, there's some apple. I think that that's kind of two cups. So we've got kind of like a fruit salad, cantaloupe, watermelon, ground cherries, and apple. I wonder if I should just put a tiny bit of lemon juice in there. Just a tiny little cap full of lemon juice just so my apples don't turn brown. And then you can add a little bit of sugar too if you want to, which I'm going to. Maybe a teaspoon? Not a teaspoon, maybe just like half a teaspoon. Okay, that looks sufficiently yummy to put on my custard now. Uh, see how this says custard powder and this says creme anglaise? Poudre, 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 creme anglaise powder for English cream. But that's not what this says. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, it is, it does say it's popular. A delicious British tradition. It tastes a lot like tapioca pudding if you took all the tapioca out that would just be the like custard that the tapioca is in I feel like this is going to make at least two servings it seems like a lot of custard but it's like a like a pudding I feel like that's a lot, but I feel like more servings would be like too small. So that's what we got. Then I'm just gonna kind of gently put all these raspberries on the top. Yummy. Fruit custard for breakfast. Doesn't that look awesome? Looks so good. You can put more sugar on it, of course, if you want to. This is a lot of fruit custard. It might even be two servings for me because that's kind of a lot for breakfast. Mm. Oh, it's so good. Still a little bit warm. Do you like your fruit custard, warm or chilled? All right, I'll eat mine anyway. Mm. Mm -hmm. That is so good. Those ground cherries are just good in any kind of fruit mixed dish yeah love it breakfast still have some ground cherries left though also this is what i'm gonna do mix it all together and eat it that way just so you know what happens there's my fruit custard <laughs> after i mix it all together yum yum mm -hmm. All right, this morning I am going to use up the last of my spinach from last year uh, and make like a spinach dip. So I've got this spinach, sour cream, mayonnaise, and this more vegetable soup mix. I'm going to mix it all up. And this really big sourdough loaf to eat it all with. So I thawed my spinach. I've thawed it and squished all of the juices out of it. I'm gonna dice it, chop it, chop it. So it's chopped. I think I chopped it before I froze it, but we'll just give it another chop. Spinach. Egg. 
And I'm gonna add this entire thing of vegetable soup mix. And mix it all up together. It's taken a while after Thanksgiving for me to need to cook anything because we had so many leftovers and people brought so many things. I thought I was going to make pumpkin pie, but then we had pies. <laughs> so, so yeah, and then we had to eat all the leftovers and all the turkey and everything. And there was absolutely like no room in the fridge to put anything even if I did cook it. But I'm back at it again. I'm going to try to use up these uh, poblano peppers and I guess this jalapeno and this garlic from the freezer to make roasted poblano hummus. I think Micah Miller and Rana Aki uh, both suggested making like a pepper hummus dip. I'm not sure they suggested poblano, roasted poblanos, but that's what I'm gonna use and it's a great idea. I have this one pita that I am going to toast up. I also have some naan bread downstairs. I'm sure we will eat it up. While I'm doing things that take a lot of time, like chickpeas, these were dried, I soaked them overnight, but um, it's definitely more than I need. If I have to do chickpeas, I like to do a bunch and then I can freeze some that'll be ready to use later for a different recipe. I'm gonna roast these garlic for this hummus and I thought, well, why don't I just roast all of the rest of the garlic that's in the freezer and then I can use it for dips or spreads or some other recipes as well. So I'm gonna do all the garlic at once, might as well if I'm doing it. Then I've got these roasted poblano peppers from the freezer. I grabbed a few jalapenos from the freezer. I've got some tahini, organic fair trade sesame tahini. I've got cumin, salt, some, I don't have any fresh lemons right now. So I've got lemon juice, olive oil, and the pita. And we're gonna make some roasted poblano hummus. First thing, cook the chickpeas. That should take about 30 to 40 minutes till they're really, really mushy. For the garlic, we're gonna set the oven at 400 degrees. I'm gonna use up these garlic. Let's get them roasted. I'm just going to peel them before I roast them. Peeling them afterwards would be a messy job. Collect them in a bowl. Once they're frozen, they're actually really easy to peel. They peel no problem at all. Then just check and make sure I don't have any bruises or anything. They do have a slightly mushier texture already being frozen, so I think that they'll do just fine as like a roasted garlic, like maybe a spread or something, or, or maybe in like some mashed potatoes. There's loads of recipes that use like a whole garlic head, but if you just have garlic cloves, roasting them like this will do just fine. Or if you bought them like as peeled garlic cloves, cause you can buy them sometimes, but you want some roasted. I'm gonna use about one tablespoon, that's one tablespoon of olive oil. I'm gonna mix that up. For once I'm a little bit happy that my garlic, or that my chickpeas are taking a little longer than I had planned because they're not soft at all and it's already been half an hour for them so I think I'm going to give them another half an hour which is about how long these should take in the oven so that works perfect. I've got a parchment lined cookie sheet and I'm just going to put all my garlic on there. I'm going to spread them out. Nicely coated in the olive oil. And I'm just going to sprinkle down with salt and into the oven. At 400, I'm gonna do 15 minutes and then stir it and then 15 minutes. All right, it's been like 45 minutes. Um, and I think they're done. Because I already squished one. See, squished, squished. We 
you want them to do is just really easily. Yeah, see, not all of them are squishing. They're, no, they're mostly squishing. I'm gonna give them five more minutes to see if any more of the uh, shells come off, and then we'll be done with them. Like 50 minutes. Yeah, the shells are starting to come off. Or not shells, but the skins. The skins are starting to come off. So that's a good sign that they're done. Almost, I'm gonna give them five minutes. I am going to top and seed these poblano peppers. What I found was you could just pull this part out. Just pull it out, hopefully. And then if you split them, this tiny one probably doesn't have any seeds. No, it doesn't. Because it's so small. But this bigger one probably does. Ugh, the seed thing didn't come out. Just to get some of those seeds out. Doesn't really matter. This isn't going to stay together in the blender, so it can be in whatever shape it ends up being. <laughs> so I'm just gonna scrape these seeds out. I'm also gonna run these underwater and see if I can't get some of those seeds out as well. Yeah, a few of the seeds out of those jalapenos. So there we go. They're ready to go. There they are after like 10 minutes. They're actually quite brown on the underside. So maybe that was a bit too long. Look how brown they are on that side. Whew. Back into the oven. Now that I can make some kind of things with the aquafaba and all that kind of stuff, but I'm not going to do it right now. I'm actually going to put them in this bowl because then all the skins that come off go to the top and then disappear. Alright, roasted garlic. Looks like pretty roasted. Looks pretty good. I think the first time was a little bit much, but this time was equally the same. <laughs> uh, all right, it was like eight minutes. It smells wonderful. To the food processor, half a cup of tahini. This is just a quarter cup measure. Half a cup of tahini. Tahini really makes the hummus. Half a cup. Of tahini. I roasted all this garlic, but I'm just gonna use like what would be maybe a head of garlic. That's like eight, nine cloves. That's a lot. These are pretty big cloves, but I like things garlicky. Don't have fresh squeezed lemon juice. A lot of lemon ju juice is gonna have to do. A quarter cup of lemon juice and two tablespoons of cold water. And we're going to blend that up. It'll be pretty thick. Oh, it helps if you put the blendy knife spinny thing in it. Right, now we're good to go. See this part? You need the spinny blade part <laughs> to make the processor blend the things. Mm -hmm. This should make a better noise. made like some kind of mess it's awesome but it's like a thick 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 paste in there oh just a messy business making hummus i'm gonna get about one and a half cups of these chickpeas and i'm gonna freeze the rest of those that's probably like a large sour cream container so that's like another two cups into the freezer of chickpeas that are ready and cooked and ready to use in whatever recipe i want so one and a half cups of chickpeas one jalapeno, that's probably more than one jalapeno. These two uh, poblano peppers from the freezer. Yum. Half a teaspoon of salt. I've got some coarse salt or kosher salt. Half a teaspoon of ground cumin. 
Oh, it smells good. One tablespoon of olive oil. That's looking pretty good. Let's blend that up. So I have this ever so sad looking pita bread from the freezer. <laughs> Do I wish it was kind of more solid? Sure. I'm gonna cut it up into like some kind of pita chips. It doesn't have to be perfect. I just have to like be able to fit some hummus on it. Falling apart bits of everything. I mean, I want nice ones like this. <laughs> that's, what I, that's what I want. I think I'm gonna grab one of these and also chop it in half too, so that I'll have a little bit more to eat the wonderful hummus with. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm just gonna use the tray that I have the garlic on because why not? More garlic is never bad. So these weirdly shaped pitas from the freezer get a little toasty. All right, let's look at this wonderful hummus. Ooh, look at the color of it. The color is amazing. Let's turn this off. That is really cool looking. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, it's pretty good. It looks pretty smooth. Probably ran it for like three minutes. Oh, that's really good. Let's get this out of here and into a bowl. Whenever I get hummus at like a restaurant, it's always on a giant plate and then it's like smoothed out in a giant circle. <laughs> and then there's like olive oil drizzled on top. And then probably a sprinkling of something red, which I can, Probably imagine would be like a chili, chili pepper or something. That's about half of the hummus. Just my lunch, ladies and gentlemen. I imagine it's so that you can, I don't know, so that it looks beautiful probably too. I'm sure I'm no good at this. Why is it a big circle? Probably so you can scoop it up better. I'm no good at making this beautiful. Wider rim on the outside so that the olive oil doesn't fall out. <laughs> All these like technical terms. Don't let the olive oil fall out of your hummus. Surely you could put some like cayenne or something on there. I just want it to look pretty and red so we're gonna use my age-old favorite spice, paprika. And try not to make a giant mess. I don't know. Oh, see, just like that. <laughs> ah, that's awesome. I'll throw some roasted garlic on there just because it looks awesome and it squishes and it's so yummy on the inside. There we go. My roasted poblano. Hummus from the freezer. And I've even got some toasty pita chips. They're kind of hot. Ooh, hot, 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 hot. Even these ones. They're nice. Oh, I think this is gonna be beautiful. Yeah, see on the plate, then you can just scoop up however much you want. Get some of that paprika. Mmm. Mmm. I love hummus. Yes, I do. Oh, I'm just gonna eat this. Half this. Mr. Wanders can have the other half. He'll probably take it to work. I'll make him some more pita chips. It's a lot of work and it dirties so many dishes. Why aren't we looking that way in your kitchen, Jessica? Because of all the dishes over there. Um, makes a lot of dishes, but it's so worth it. Three poblano peppers, gone. Some garlic, roasted. And I'm going to use it for some other stuff. And the pita chips will be gone soon. 
Thumbs up for me for lunch. Thumbs up. Make hummus. Put whatever you want in it. I've made beet hummus. This is poblano pepper hummus. I just dip the roasted garlic in the hummus as well. <laughs> roasted garlic hummus. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Yum. I'm gonna throw a bunch of these hot peppers in a spaghetti. Cues up some peppers. I forgot the garlic. Uh, yeah, spaghetti. Hello. For supper tonight, I am going to use up the rest of my banana peppers. Hot banana peppers mix. Some of them might be Hungarian wax peppers from the freezer. These are the last of them. I'm also going to use up the rest of this roasted garlic that I made from the last of the garlic in the freezer. I'm gonna do like a stir fry. I've got a couple of cups of rice that I'm gonna do up. I've got one, like kind of like a strip loin steak, I think. I've got soy sauce, broccoli, mushrooms, some canola oil or any kind of oil. I've got some bok choy that I had from the freezer. I've got some ginger. I've got some cornstarch. I'm gonna try to do up like a nice uh, stir fry. Oh, and I've got these green onions, green onions from the garden and some celery. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do a stir fry. I think it was Chelsea Drisdale in this challenge that suggested stir fries to use up my peppers. So thank you so much for the hinty, hinty, nudge, nudge suggestion. I've also got this teriyaki uh, sauce that I like to put on my stir fry. So uh, let's do this up. I think it'll be yummy. Just gonna mix this steak with one tablespoon of cornstarch. I'm just gonna coat all that meat in that cornstarch. Till it's evenly coated. Why do I mix meat in tiny little bowls? I don't know. Crazy. I'm gonna dice up some of these green onions. Oh, don't roll away. Oh, what's the meatball song? Roll it onto the floor. And then my poor meatball rolls right out the door. I have a lot of green onions. I put them in everything. And then I think I'll just put up these green bits to like sprinkle on top at the end. Garnish. And I've got some celery sliced thin. I can use the broccoli that I harvested from the garden this morning. So I'm super excited about that. I think roasting up all this garlic was really a win for me because then you could just put it on anything you like, whenever you like. It was nice when it was nice and crisp, but once you put it in the fridge with the lid on, it gets kind of chewy, but it still tastes really good. Mmm, roasted garlic in my stir fry. I'm gonna chop up all this broccoli. Kind of 
kind of into manageable bits here. Stir fry. Stems too, the stems just taste just like broccoli. Anyways, just like the rest of the broccoli. So we have a lot of veggies in this sort of beef and vegetable stir fry because I've got celery and onions, green onions, and then lots of broccoli. There we go. About one tablespoon of oil. So I'm using canola oil, rapeseed oil, two tablespoons of canola oil actually. Just didn't look like enough. <laughs> I think this might be pretty hot. That's good enough. That was one piece. There we go. Two cups of rice. Okay, I've got some green onions and celery, broccoli, pepper, garlic, some mushrooms, some soy sauce, ginger, A little bit of cornstarch. Maybe like a tablespoon. Stir fry is always a good suggestion. Got some nice rice, basmati rice, just because that's what I have. And then some of this wonderful stir fry beef vegetable, stir fry, with some broccoli, all some peppers from the freezer, and garlic from the freezer. Wonderful. Just eat the peppers. Just eat them. Eat the garlic. <laughs> Just eat it. Just eat it. Then I'm going to put some of this thick teriyaki sauce, because that's what I like, on top. Some of that, some green onions. And just some sesame seeds. I don't have any toasted sesame seeds. I just have sesame seeds. There we go. Stir fry for dinner. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm Those peppers are good. They're all gone. Why did I have fresh peppers <laughs> loaded up from the garden? Full circle. Yummy. Thank you so much for the suggestion, Chelsea. Yummy, yummy, yummy. Stir fry with my peppers. Is my freezer empty after week eight of this freezer challenge? Heck no. I still have beets, poblano peppers, a few ground cherries, all this pumpkin left. Uh, some egg rolls, some plum sauce. I did seed all those habanero peppers. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with them, but I had, had hopes for them. I suspect that they're not going to get used, but uh, yeah. So that's everything. I've got one more week. Next week, I'm, this is all going to be gone. It's going to be gone. I have to get rid of it. <laughs> So we have so much stuff in our other freezers that are coming in from the garden and it has to pile up in here. So this has to be gone or I have to be done 
either way. I either use this or next week is my last week anyways. That is the end of week eight. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. You can click my face to see more videos from me and I'll see you next time for one more week of freezer challenge. Bye.